Hi, uh, good afternoon and uh, uh, welcome to the Institute of Teacher Education International Languages Campus Virtual Colloquium 2020, organized by the Department of Planning, Innovation and Research. My name is Chandran Abraham from the Department of Planning, Innovation and Research in the Institute of Teacher Education International Languages Campus, and I will be the moderator for today's presentation. We are truly privileged to have with us today Professor Richard Kiley. And today he will be sharing his thoughts on teacher research and implications for educational management. A little bit biodata about Professor Richard Kiley. He's a professor of TESOL and applied linguistic, linguistics who has worked in over 20 countries and in five UK universities over the last 45 years. Recent books include Exploratory Practice for Continuing Professional Development and Innovative Approach for Language and Teacher Discussion, a practical guide to research. It's what Ladies and gentlemen, let's do a format. Professor Richard Hyde spoken the last four months. If you have any questions, please answer them. Type them out, ask the questions, and at the bottom of the screen, we will have a question and answer session to respond to your questions. However, if we don't get your questions today, today is not the time. Do try to respond to it. Lastly, we would like you to like to encourage you to share today's webinar with our social network. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome Professor Richard Hyde. Over to you, Professor. Thanks very much, Dr. Chandran. Uh, um, I hope everyone uh, can see me now. Welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you. Um, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Chandran, Dr. Prema, and Dr. Selva, and the team at the IPG in KL, IPG KBA, um, uh, for organizing this and setting it up in uh, such an effective way. I am truly honored to be invited to contribute to this uh, webinar. I have uh, 45 years of experience, as Dr. Chandran said, many of those years in Malaysia. He, as a high school teacher, uh, many, many years ago, and more recently working with colleagues in the uh, Teacher Education Institutes and ELTC in Kuala Lumpur. My, um, my talk today is on teacher research. It's about an approach to teacher research, which I think is innovative and which I think uh, benefits the quality, the program quality that students experience in English language programs and benefits the institutes in which they work, the schools, universities, and other institutions. Um, if we can see um, the first slide, I don't know if uh, Prema, can you hear me? If you can see my, um, my first slide, my my title today is, uh, is Teacher Research and Implications for Educational Management in ELT. The next slide uh, has the abstract. And the next slide, I have two key points from the abstract. So next slide, the two trends that I want to address today are a trend in uh, program management where 
Well, the second trend, if I can have the next slide, Prema. Yes, the, 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 the trend of teacher research as a means of establishing effective strategies and activities for the classroom. Now, we are in a post-method age, it is often called. And we are also in an age where there is a deeper understanding of context, the particular context of the language learning. And this means that teachers have to make a lot of decisions. The second trend is the program management trend, curriculum planning based on specific learning outcomes as a form of direction and support for teachers' work. So on the one hand, teachers are supposed to uh, understand their context, analyze their situation, and make decisions. On the other, they are supposed to achieve specific competencies, specific learning outcomes as determined by the institution. Now, the next slide. The case for teacher research is, um, is made in, in uh, many, many contexts. And the, the rationale is research my rationale is research is part of effective teaching. Good teachers are already doing research. And research enhances teacher learning, student engagement, and program quality. Um, a plug for my book here, a book coming out next year, Teachers into Researchers, a practical handbook for teacher researchers published by the Foreign Language Teaching and Research Company in China. Now, the next slide, please. The book is a long book, 14 chapters, four examples of teacher research, and 45 outline teacher research projects. So a lot in that book. But today, in this talk, I'm going to tell two stories point to some ways forward, set out a matrix of topics and themes, and in the end, some questions and discussion. So the next slide, please. The first example, the first story, and this is from my work as, uh, as a teacher, educator, and researcher a few years ago. And I was uh, leading a program for high school teachers from China, a city in China. It was a professional development workshop. And what I'm going to present now is a summary of a four-hour workshop, which I present uh, in a very brief summary form. Now, the teachers in this context were working in a city area some urban schools, some rural, and some uh, suburban or semi-rural schools. So varied context. The program they were teaching was based on a course book, which was based on the national approach, which was communicative language teaching. It, it had pretty recognizable communicative language teaching features. If we can go to the next slide, for the summary of the workshop. When we were, the workshop was about using course books and the teacher's view was we have to follow the textbook. So we just follow the textbook. This was like um, nothing interesting here. We follow the textbook. The next slide, which is my uh, questions on my contribution as a moderator of this long workshop. Uh, any problems with that? Now, after I pose these questions, or after my contribution, I handed back to the teachers. There were some breakout sessions. And the answer to the question, any problem, was not enough time to cover everything. Well, the next question, the next slide, you can see 
we have to leave things out. So this is very interesting for me, and this is where the work of the teacher becomes uh, a teacher research activity. We can see their response in the next slide. Sometimes there's not enough time to do group work and projects. Now, as I said, the textbook was a communicative language teaching textbook and it uh, uh, had a strong focus on interaction, student to student interaction. In the next slide, my question was, what do you feel is really important with each unit? And the next slide, we can see the answers to that, the grammar and reading comprehension. And the teacher's rationale was, because of the examination. The next slide. What about writing? And the answer to that in the next slide is very important, but we sometimes don't have time for process writing. We do it on the board first. And what they described to me was uh, a process of uh, teaching writing, a process for the writing lesson, where they did uh, the task-based writing, which was write a story, write an email, uh, write a description of a process based on some visuals. This was the task in the writing lesson. And they would talk about it. And the teacher would elicit the text. The correct text was then written on the board by the teacher, and everybody uh, would, would see that. And then at the point where the text was complete, the teacher would wipe the board clean and ask the students to do the writing task. And of course, uh, they did the writing task, and it was perfect. Everything was correct. And the teachers then had a very, uh, a very acceptable task, a very manageable task of marking work, which was largely correct. The next slide, please. What we see here, there are eight issues from this story that uh, are important, were very important for me and part of my learning but are, in, uh, are important for understanding the role of research in the acts of teaching. The first one is what I call the normative reflex. And this is teachers, and teachers are right in feeling this. They feel they are part of a community of practice. They feel they are doing things in the way they are done in that institution. And this is why the teacher started off by saying, we just follow the course book. The, the textbook, or the course book, the textbook, which is what the teachers used in the workshop, the textbook as syllabus. This is increasingly the case. The curriculum, in terms of learning outcomes, is translated into a series of activities and materials and this integrated form of outcomes, activities, materials is the course book. And this is what is the syllabus for the teachers. There is the issue of time. Now, when you are preparing materials, you have excess materials. Publishers know that, and teachers like excess materials. This is, uh, this is, the, the reality in most teachers' work context. What the issue of time gives us is a need for selection. And this is where the teacher analysis and decision making gets very interesting. Now, from the brief uh, summary of the long workshop we've looked at, we can see three principles of selection. The first one is examination relevance. 
the teachers know what is in their students' interests, and that is success in the examination. Another principle of selection is the teacher comfort zone. And this is, what is the teacher happy doing? And actually, grammar is one of those areas. A lot of English language teachers are English language teachers because they were good at English grammar. And this success in English grammar has stayed with them and is, as I say here, part of their comfort zone. This is an important point for teachers to reflect on. The third principle of selection is teacher control. Now, sometimes controlling the behavior of the students is a problem. But more often, it is controlling the time. Teachers have to get through quite a bit of material, whether it's the, the course book or series of learning outcomes. So these three areas are principles of selection. The uh, one other point from this summary is about language learning. And language use as a stimulus for language learning, this is a main pillar of communicative language teaching. And we can see that in the material. The other point is memorization. Now, in communicative language teaching, there's a lot of uncertainty and indeed sometimes confusion about the role of memorization. But actually, in classroom, teachers and students work together to use memorization. And we can see in the summary of the lesson I've just gone through, the teaching of writing had a large memorization strategy. And we also know successful learners use memorization. The final point is voices of diversity. And this last point is a point of skepticism about the brief summary I have presented, which suggests in the normative reflex idea that all the teachers in one context teach in the same way. Of course, they don't. They are diverse and they all have uh, the condition depends on in their description. What do you do? It depends. Depends on this, depends on that. So uh, the summary I have given you does not deal adequately with the diversity in the practice of teachers. Now, a final word on this slide. These issues are all relevant to teacher research. They are both uh, uh, evidence of a research orientation in the teacher's practice. The teachers are analyzing multiple dimensions of their context, and they are working within the framework they have to work, but with the analysis of what they see as possible and important. The next slide, please. Yeah, oh, yes, the in, thank you. I was just going to say there, the awareness of the teachers here is a part of teacher research. The next slide is the second uh, story I want to tell you today. Uh, and it's about classroom interaction. It is 10 seconds of classroom interaction. It's a lesson uh, from a UK English as a foreign language school, so based in the UK, a classroom in which I was doing uh, classroom interaction research some time ago. It was a class of 17 students. The approach was task-based language teaching. And what I'm focusing on is a reading comprehension lesson where um, the teacher had given some texts and the students were asked to read the texts and discuss the content in a pair work situation. The specific task they had was to decide on a movie they would both like to see. 
And what the, the text the teacher was using was an authentic text. It was a flyer, an advertising text from a local cinema, which, which had six rooms, and they were showing six films in the following days or whatever the period was. What the task was, was to read the summaries of the six movies, discuss their preferences, and then decide together which movie they would go and see. So a very, um, a very typical reading comprehension and discussion task. The next slide. What we can see in this slide, I call it a critical learning episode. We can see uh, the 10 seconds of interaction um, with nine turns. The speakers are S is student, T is teacher. Now, picture the scene. The students are in pairs and they're looking at the text and the task and uh, they've just started the teacher is walking about and then the teacher hears a student this student say i ask a friend if it's worth to see actually what this student is saying is she, she doesn't decide on movies uh, from advertising text by the cinema. She asks her friends. The teacher corrects her, worth seeing, and then she repeats if it's worth seeing. So repeats what the correction is. The teacher says yes. Then there's a slight hesitation and she says not worth to see. The teacher says no. She repeats again. I ask a friend if it's worth seeing. The teacher says okay nods, moves on, and the student writes uh, this, the correct structure uh, in her notebook. So this is the, the scene. If we can have the next slide, we can see here um, the practices. Now in this, um, in this uh, a critical learning episode, this 10 seconds, we can see, um, no, you're going, uh, can you go back to, yes, please, yes. Uh, this, in this, we can see four practices here. We can see the practice of pair work. Some classrooms have that, some don't. We can see the practice of the teacher correcting. Now, this is probably a universal of classroom, teachers correct. We can see the practice of teacher circulating. Now, you find this in some classrooms, teachers walk about, but in other classrooms, teachers stay in their space near the board. And you have the practice of students taking notes, taking notes when asked to by the teacher, taking notes without. These practices are all interesting. They are all areas we need to understand, and each teacher needs to understand. And understanding these is actually uh, the contribution that teacher research can make. Now, the next slide, please. In teacher research, the teacher researcher can uh, explore these, these practices uh, in my classroom. Pair work, correcting, circulating, do they happen in my classroom? Uh, in my belief system, what do I think of these activities? And in our cultural space, so in the school or institution, what do people think of these? So these are the basis for teacher research. Now, the reason, that, if we can go to the next slide, the reason uh, I'm showing you this episode today is it's got some interesting complications. When we look at what does the teacher correct, and I'm sure you've spotted this already, it's a grammatical point. 
actually a very low frequency, not very important grammatical distinction where you have a phrase like it's worth and then you have a question, is it two plus infinitive or is it the ing form? Who knows? Different people use different ones. But the teacher here has a view of the correct one. And he corrects her. So if you see the second, uh, next slide, please. Um, should the teacher interrupt a fluency activity like this? Now, when we start, training teachers, and we say uh, um, something like uh, fluency activity, focus on fluency, accuracy activity, focus on accuracy. And then we find the rule seems to be broken by an experienced teacher. And if we look at the next slide, we see uh, in turn five, what is happening here? Is this good? Actually, what the student is doing is checking with the teacher uh, who is correct. The student actually thinks the teacher's got this wrong, that she's right and the teacher is wrong. So she double checks. And having double checked, she then is happy to accept the teacher's correction. Now, in the next slide, we have the teacher's rationale this was in a research project and in a workshop, the teacher said, I corrected her because she loved grammar and I knew she would appreciate it and she did. And in the next slide, we can see what I see here and what we decided in the workshop on this, which was a research into teacher learning workshop. This is an example of a teacher and a student doing mutually supportive engagement work. Now, in the research project uh, that this is from, and I've written quite a bit about, we found a lot of work like this, teachers and students doing mutually supportive engagement work. And what we found were teachers were teaching individual lessons a kind of private tuition within the framework of the lesson as a whole. And this is not a new thing. This happens all the time, where teachers have certain understandings of the situation and needs of particular students, and they give feedback based on the identity of that student, based on the needs of that student, based on their analysis of what benefits that student. And this analysis is actually the research work that is already within teaching. The next slide, you can see um, the publication, the book we wrote from this uh, project, Investigating Critical Learning Episodes, and that's on the web at that website. If we can look at the next slide, so stories of teaching, like the two that I've shared with you uh, in this webinar, these stories of teaching are the starting point for teacher research. And there is a need in ELT for teachers to contribute by sharing what they do, exploring why they do it, and explaining how they make it work. Now, we have the idea that methods work to stimulate learning. We have the idea that successful materials, you know, designed, particularly well-designed course books or online materials where everything is, is organized and programmed, they work on their own. And actually, we also have a lot of, uh, of research and understanding showing us they do not work on their own. Teachers make them work. These are made to work through the way teachers use them as tools. Now, when I'm proposing teacher research, I want to build on expertise in five areas. In the next slide, 
we can see uh, five topic areas, teacher expertise, classroom practices, student transformation, resources, and communities of practice. These are the topic areas in which I would position teacher research. The next slide. I would create a matrix between these five topic areas and five themes. And the themes I will take you through very quickly now. These are what teachers are doing in the classroom. Component one, analytic cognitive activity. As we saw in the Word Seeing episode, teachers are constantly uh, uh, analyzing, deciding. Component two is learning awareness. How difficult, how accessible is this point for my students? Is this material for my students? Component three is SAC, affective, social affective and cultural factors. Component four is classroom continuity. And this is the, the point. Teachers don't teach lessons. They teach students on courses. And lessons are not totally separate units. Lessons flow into other lessons. And five, component five, is the curriculum policy content. content. Teachers teach students for exams. They teach them to achieve specified learning outcomes. So these five themes are drivers of the teacher's work, are what the teacher always wants to achieve in their work of teaching. The next slide, please. I see these five themes, these drivers of teaching, as one entity with five facets. And if we can go through them, the next slide shows ACA, constant planning and adapting in the classroom, informed by student responses, capacities, and personalities. Uh, LA in the next slide shows, reflects the attention to individual language learning trajectories related to the challenge of lesson material. The, Component three in the next slide, SAC, friendship, respect, and mutuality in the social space of the classroom. Every teacher knows the classroom has to work socially before it can work as a learning space. Component four, the next slide, classroom continuity, remembering and drawing on shared memory and learning experiences of the group. The teacher is the one who makes the links. The word we had last week. Do you remember when we were doing the reading comprehension about New York? This is really important work in consolidating learning. And the last one, component five, CPC. What the teacher is required to do in terms of materials, tests, and stakeholder expectations. This will vary from uh, context to context, school, institution, uh, country. In the next slide, we have, and you can't read this, but we have the teacher research design matrix with the five topics down the, down the rows. And across the top, uh, each column is one of the themes. And uh, in my book, I set out 45 ways in which teachers can begin to research their practice, to understand, understand how they are already researching their practice in implementing it uh, using this design matrix. The next slide, please. In conclusion, I three points in conclusion. Teacher research is an integral part of teaching. The analysis formation, the, the analysis work, the hypothesis formation, the decision making, 
that is fundamental to research is already there in the work of teachers. Teacher research uh, makes this explicit. If we are looking at it in a reflective practice or exploratory practice mode, we find teacher research promotes teacher learning. And through that, through teacher learning, we can conclude teacher research, research benefits program quality. The final part of the conclusion in the next slide, the question to ask, uh, how should I do teacher research? I would recommend teachers ask experts, how should I do teacher research? Teachers need input on methods. But the question to answer is, what should I investigate? Now, in my experience, teachers often uh, feel they know the answer to the how should I do teacher research uh, questionnaire, uh, uh, interview, uh, methods like that. Teachers have some familiarity with methods. But what should I investigate? They look to experts to answer that. They look to the literature. My approach would suggest don't look to the literature. Don't look to the experts. Look at your own practice. Reflect on your own practice. And you decide what you should investigate, what you as a teacher should research. Thank you very much. I think uh, we have uh, opportunity for some questions now. Uh, Dr. Chandran is back. Thank you Thank very you much, very much uh, uh, Professor Richard. Uh, and I think uh, it has been very informative for us. Uh, there are a few questions here that uh, have been posed, questions have been posed. And one of them is, uh, with the many roles teachers have to play, how would you encourage teachers to engage in research? I think this is a concern by many of them because you have to have a play uh, or you have got lots of things to do in school. How would you encourage them to be involved in research? Yes, so that is a really important question. And it is wrong to assume that teachers anywhere can uh, uh, automatically fit research activity into the work they have as teachers. But I think uh, when we have a good uh, policy set up, a good policy and resource framework for teaching, where we want to achieve high quality developing programs and experiences for students, we have to incorporate professional development for teachers as part of the work of teaching. Now, in my time, uh, when I started teaching 40 plus 45 years ago, there was the idea that a teacher had some training and they were qualified as a teacher, maybe at age 22 or 24. And then the idea was they are trained. That is enough for the next 40 years. They can now work as a teacher without further training. No place would uh, subscribe to that idea now. Most systems would accept we need to have ongoing learning. We need to have lifelong learning in teaching as in other professions. Now, this means uh, investing in uh, professional development for teachers. My approach would be to ask the question, how can we use that resource? How can we use the time and the mentoring to stimulate uh, teacher research? Um, related to that, I think we have uh, opportunities to study for um, uh, higher degrees for masters or doctoral programs and in many systems teachers have the opportunity 
to have some funding and some time for doing that. So I think that is a resource that can be available. Um, I also think you have uh, uh, mentorship is part of that. And uh, mentorship is very good in uh, stimulating uh, uh, professional development. The, the final point I would say on that is an opportunity to share. And the question I would pose for, for teachers and for leaders of teachers, you know, managers of institutions or schools or programs, where do teachers have a, an opportunity to share insights into their work? And from these uh, basic uh, provisions, it is possible that teachers will find an opportunity to construct and share with others what is happening in their classroom and also explanations as to why. And through the act of sharing, then the knowledge and understanding created by teachers comes into the public domain. So I, 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 I have no easy answer, but I think where you have a commitment to professional development for teachers and a resource for professional development uh, for teachers, you have an opportunity to orient that towards research and that I think creates a small space that teachers can use. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Richard. Now, uh, this question is quite, quite uh, uh, somehow a bit slightly different here because uh, uh, one of the participants uh, posed this question. How can we convince administrators to take our research findings seriously? I think the problem is that when research is done and given to the school administrator, I think the problem is they do not take it seriously. How, do they, how can they convince them? I think it is not, uh, it's not an easy task. And I think um, the, in most uh, educational systems, there is a commitment to evidence-based decision-making. And what we need to do is to construct the evidence that um, that uh, there is a rationale for teacher research, that it works. Um, and I think we, we need to work on that and we need to make that case. In my experience, and I think in the uh, critical learning episodes work that I did and the book that I published that's on the, that's on the web, that was an example of where we showed not only the rationale for teacher research, but also a process by which it could be done. Um, a way of doing a program of professional development, which in that case was six meetings in a year. So one academic year, volunteer teachers had an opportunity to participate in six workshops with us. And for those workshops, we required teachers to capture episodes from their classrooms. And what we did, our particular innovation there, was to ask the teachers to identify the critical learning episode. And then we, as more the experienced researchers constructed the episodes as data. We did the, uh, the transcribing, we did the uh, uh, creating the video clips, and the, the technical work on the evidence on the data was done by the researchers. But the teachers were the ones who did the initial identification of critical learning episodes and did the analysis work. What does this mean? Now, in a way, it's, uh, it's not easy to, to, 
to um, it's not easy to get such programs off the ground. Um, in the area of communities of practice, I think that is an area where um, if you develop that, and teachers have a forum for sharing. And this, I think, is where administrators, managers, leaders, what they have to do is to create the forum for sharing. Not national conferences, no, no, not sharing on uh, that kind of basis, but small local sharing, once a semester, uh, once a year, on particular themes and simply create an opportunity for teachers to showcase, then that is an important stimulus. It can start with a very low level of resource. And then, of course, as the activity starts, the resource can increase. Thank you, Professor. Then and there's another question here where uh, a teacher had posed here that, uh, you know, in his school, uh, the headmaster actually requests for more for quantity rather than quality of the research itself. So everybody talks about quantity, the number of research that it's going to be, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, people do participate. So what would you suggest? Is it uh, we got to focus more on quantity or quality? Well, certainly, um, and, uh, and particularly in the university sector, the issue of quantity has become um, uh, an important uh, uh, phenomenon in the last few decades. I've been in the university sector myself. I know exactly how that works. And the quantity is uh, uh, indeed it's 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 a separate skill set. You know, researchers think, okay, I have this. Uh, uh, this analysis work, uh, how can I share it as multiple papers, not as one, one paper? So I increase the quantity in terms of outputs. And this is what's called the research game, where, where you use uh, uh, effort and skills to, to, to show the, to the maximum, the volume of the research. I think for teacher research, the quantity of output um, is huge work pressure. And it also uh, promotes replication. And it promotes research in uh, what we can call conventional research approaches. So you, you have a research focus based on the literature. You have a research focus based on what is already the focus of publishing. And where you have that, you get this um, uh, orientation towards theory and not towards practice. And for teacher research, we, we need to have the focus on practice. We need to have teachers explaining why they do things, not answering universal questions about how to teach reading comprehension, or which strategies for teaching reading comprehension are more successful than other strategies. And then that can be published as a universal recommendation linked to reading comprehension research, language strategies research. And that is already being, being done. That research is, is out there. It actually doesn't make a great contribution to the learning of teachers. What we need from teachers, and this is the quality question for teacher research, how well does the research, does the analysis work, focus on why teachers do certain things, how they make reading comprehension lessons work, how they use existing resources in order to improve students' reading comprehension skills so that they can perform well 
in the particular context of reading comprehension examination. Now, teachers, experienced teachers, have many insights into uh, uh, how they make reading comprehension lessons effective. And that is the quality question for teacher research. And we have to manage the boundary between teacher research, which has the focus on what the teacher does, why they do it, how they make it work. We have to get that particular focus, keep it separate from the more universal uh, uh, accounting for reading comprehension instruction, for example. Okay, thank you. And uh, the final question here is, uh, should teachers always get consent as part of research ethics before doing re uh, teacher research in a classroom? Well, the answer, uh, the short answer is yes. And I acknowledge that this is a, a complication. I think you have ethical issues and you have legal issues which differ from place to place and they differ with students who are children and students who are adults and teachers have to uh, be professional in dealing with that however that said the work of teachers as i've said throughout this uh, this talk the work of teachers already includes research and, uh, and teachers, in their teaching, they collect samples of students' written work, uh, samples of students' spoken work, uh, samples of video or student presentation, and of course, their own talk. They can record that and, and have access to that. And within teaching, you don't need consent to give feedback to a student on their written work. That is a teaching task, which is part of the teaching, the work of teaching. And it can be data. The result of that can be data for uh, teacher research. Now, so as long as uh, it is anonymized, and as long as no one is, is identified or harmed in any way, it can be part of reflective projects for teacher development, which are research oriented and possibly which can be shared. So this I think is part of, uh, it is a question that needs to be asked in every situation within national uh, legal frameworks, within the institutional uh, professional frameworks. And it is possible for teachers to investigate in a data-led way their practice without having too many, without being encumbered by too many uh, uh, legal and bureaucratic hurdles. And, uh, and as I said at the outset, it's very important to distinguish uh, on the basis of the age of students. Dealing with students who are adults is very different from dealing with students who are children. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Richard Kiley, for your enlightening talk on teacher research and implications for educational management. We are truly grateful to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today is the 17th session, and uh, just like to remind you that the 18th session, that is our last session, will be on the 27th of October at Malaysian time, 9 a.m. Please mark on your calendar. 18th session, which is going to be our last session, will be on the 27th of October at 9 a.m. Malaysian time. Uh, we'll be having uh, Professor Dr. Gina Morrison from U.S. She'll be sharing with us on gender equality quality in educational leadership and the moderator for the session will be miss anis alisha binti abdullah a director from one of the uh, 
uh, campuses of the Teacher Education Institute. And uh, we will also, followed by 10.30 in the morning, we'll have our official uh, closing ceremony by the rector of the Teacher Training Institute. So hope to see all of you. Uh, please do inform uh, all your friends about the 18th session, which will be held on the 27th of October at 9 a.m. Malaysian time. See you then on the 27th of October. Bye. Thank you.